Are you often infuriated by ticking clocks, noisy eating, or any other small sounds? Sounds Like Misophonia is the first dedicated guide to living with this condition. Create a treatment plan that works for you with the Essential Misophonia Guide, now available from Bloomsbury Green Tree. Gossip at the Corpse Cart contains graphic and explicit content that may not be suitable for some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome back to Gossip at the Corpse Cart, where us wine and crime gals talk about the shit you've already probably heard about by now, and that's okay. Or the shit that keeps you up at night that you can't believe you did in seventh grade. That. Mm. Yes. That. Yep, Mm -hmm. yep, yep. Or Uh, maybe a brand new phobia. Yes. Yeah, and thank we'll get you. To Can't it. wait to receive that this month. (laughs) Every month. (laughs) I'm Lucy. Oh, I'm Kenyon. I'm Amanda. I'm living in fear. She's Mm. banana. I'm banana. Oh, my God. I'm not banana. I checked. (laughs) How do you How recently? This, well, I'm looking at my hand. So that part's not It could be a delusion. Mm -hmm. Bananas are known to hallucinate. Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, great. Well, let's (laughs) get going with some. With some headlines from Amanda so she can try not to think about the fact that she might be a banana. I probably am. Oh. <laughs> we'll, we'll get through it together, ba- honey. Speaking of bananas, this first what? one reminds me of the hit line in the hit film, Austin Powers. Oh, I thought you were going to go with <laughs> B-A-N-A-N-A-S. Oh, no, not that. <laughs> but the line in question is, I'm telling you, baby, it's not mine. <laughs> oh, my still God. topical, still relevant. It's still, oh, okay. <laughs> and still Florida. So this comes at us from our favorite state. And the headline reads, Florida man claims bag of cocaine and meth found wrapped around Penis <laughs> aren't his. I don't know how they got there, officer. <laughs> right? Uh, you know, it wasn't me. It he wasn't pulled the me. shaggy. <laughs> <laughs> the shaggy. <laughs> this says a Clearwater man claims that drugs deputies found wrapped around his penis did not belong to him. Mm-hmm. 34-year-old Patrick Florence was riding in a car that was pulled over after police say he was driving without his lights on early oh. Saturday morning. This is what I'm saying. If you're if you're committing crimes, don't commit crimes. Don't yeah, don't commit <laughs> traffic violations yeah. for sure. That's mm-hmm. traffic violations and uh, like obviously racism are like the number one ways to get pulled over. Well, but this is statistically actually w- yeah. the the, tra- the uh traffic violation thing anyway. Well, right. This is just the traffic violation that's just yeah. calling you out. Just make sure that your tabs are up to date. I know that they are, are a bitch right. to deal with, but you got to if you want to commit the crimes. Correct. And you got working headlights and taillights and, and you blinkers. use them. Use and your blinkers. blinker. Yep. Oh, my God. People never use their fucking Slow blinkers. down. Yeah. Yeah. It's not that hard. It's you know, actually, really not that hard. Actually, there's this one road by my house. And when people are going the exact speed limit, I'm always like, they've got You're, drugs in their car. They're right. high. You're high. I was just right going to say, like, go the go like five miles over. Right. Then you Don't look, be too perfect. Mm-hmm. Right. But yeah, don't drive around with your lights off if you got meth wrapped around your donger. Mm-mm. It shouldn't <laughs> be that hard. So the driver of the vehicle was arrested by police for DUI and possession of marijuana. A search of the car uncovered a gun under Florence's seat. Honey, mm. no. The deputy searched Florence and found bags of methamphetamines and cocaine wrapped around his penis. Florence was arrested, and the report said he, quote, stated the package wrapped around his penis was not his, end quote. (laughs) WFLA (laughs) reports that Florence did not say who the drugs found on his person might belong to. Mm -hmm. We worry that Florence's case might not stand up in court, as they say. (laughs) Possession is nine 
inches of the lab. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I thought Don't he flatter was yourself. Get flatter off him. for some reason. <laughs> Might not stand up in court. <laughs> not stand up in court. <laughs> but, you get know. Off. That was good. They That's had to get nice. a fun little joke in there. <laughs> so... Next headline, now that our group chat is all starting each day with our Wordle scores. I know, you guys <laughs> broke me down. Yes, well, as did your mother break all of us down and get yeah. us on board with breaking you down because yep. she was calling us about the Wordle. She never called me. I fly under the radar when it comes to Elizabeth. She <laughs> called me every single day for a long time about just about the Wordle. Oh, yeah. And I was like, I don't want to do this. And now well, I do it. Now I did it at 6 a.m. this morning. That's that, the, the first thing I do when I get up. It's, <laughs> it's, it's important. And this, uh, this story feels extremely on the nose. Now that we're in this routine, this is how we're going to keep an eye out for each other. Oh. So this reads, a missing game of Wordle helps end a 17-hour hostage ordeal. What? Oh. Oh, yeah. I think I heard about this. Oh, yeah. A Chicago grandmother was rescued from a 17-hour hostage ordeal after police were alerted for the unlikeliest of reasons, a missing solution to the day's Wordle challenge. <laughs> so this is Elizabeth and yeah. all of us. <laughs> Denise Holt, 80 years old, was alone at home in Illinois on the 5th of February when a naked and mentally ill suspect entered her home. That oh, is, no. That's He's a lot. naked that and she happened has this in... little grandma at home by herself. Yeah. Uh... The nudity. What's the what's the I see dead people? Oh, yeah. Sixth yeah, sense. yeah, yeah. In the sixth sense. Mm hmm. Her daughter in faraway Seattle noticed something was amiss when Miss Holt failed to send her daily wordle. Mm -hmm. The suspect now faces several felony charges. According to Miss Holt, she was sleeping in bed in Chicago's Lincolnwood area when 32-year-old James H. Davis III entered her home and pointed a pair of scissors at her. Mm -hmm. He was naked and bleeding after being cut by window shards while entering the house. Oh. God, it is a it, that's an absolute horror show to wake that up is, to. That is the that's the number one fear. That's mm -hmm. it. Yep. While Mr. Davis told her he wouldn't harm her, he did force her still wearing a nightgown to take a warm bath with him before <gasps> taking two knives from the kitchen, disconnecting phones and locking her in a cold basement bathroom. And no. she's in her 80s. This poor woman. It's yeah. like it's giving me Boston Strangler vibes. Right. Ugh. Targeting old la an old lady. Mm hmm. Oh. It's so scary. Across the country in Seattle, Miss Holt's daughter, Meredith Holt Caldwell, sued notice that her mother wasn't responding to text messages and hadn't sent in her Wordle, a popular daily word puzzle game. Quote, that was disconcerting to her, Miss Holt said, because her daughter knew that this was a routine she never missed. Mm -hmm. Alarmed, Miss Holt Caldwell alerted police who conducted a wellness check at her home on the 6th of February. A standoff with Mr. Davis ensued, ending only when a police SWAT team used a stun gun to subdue him and take him into custody. Wow. Police, yeah, isn't this wild? Police say that Mr. Davis now faces a range of felony charges, including home invasion with a deadly weapon, aggravated kidnapping, and assault against a peace officer, a term that includes police and probation officers, prison guards, and other law enforcement officials. Ms. Holt was unharmed during the incident. Well, I yeah. I mean, I, uh, physically. Ar arguably, no. Yeah, psychologically unharmed. Loony. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Quote, I never thought in a million years this is what was happening, but it was. She said, I'm very lucky. Oh, oh my God. My God. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So if you two do not send your Wordle, yep. you're getting a wellness check. You have a my Wordle pledge check. to Fair. always bug you with my Wordle. Always send the Wordle or at least some sort of check in every day. Yep. Okay. So last month we discussed potatoes closing down a Minnesota highway. <laughs> yep. Oh, let's God, what see. is it now? Let's see what the Midwest <laughs> has for us this month. <laughs> oh, no. From our neighbors in Wisconsin. Oh, God. Farmer had no idea cows fell out of trailer and onto highway, <gasps> Sun Prairie oh. police say. No. <gasps> Are they okay? Yes, otherwise I wouldn't feature this. Yeah. Sun Prairie, Wisconsin. 
a bovine blockade on U.S. <laughs> Highway 151 <laughs> surprised not only drivers Monday afternoon, but also Monday. the Monday, <laughs> Monday. but also the See cow's Monday, owner, Monday. <laughs> according to police. <laughs> Quote, this was a crazy situation. It was incredibly dangerous and it ended very positively, but it's also incredibly funny, Lieutenant (laughs) Ryan Cox with the Sun Prairie Police Department said. Keeping it real. Yep. But also quite humorous. Very funny, yeah. He explained the incident which led authorities to block some lanes on the highway began with a farmer heading northbound with a herd of cattle loaded in his trailer. Quote, there's no real knowledge about why the trailer came undone at this point. We're still looking into that, he said. (laughs) The trailer's back door had opened and the farmer kept driving. He had no idea that an unaware drop-off would follow, Cox (laughs) said, while traveling at roughly 55 miles an hour. Three cows fell out, hit the road, and suffered minor injuries. That is utterly tragic. Oh, my God. (laughs) Oh, no. They my God, I can't. They're, they're really milking this one. They're, yeah, they're milking it. <laughs> Officers, including those from Madison Police Department and Wisconsin State Patrol, helped round up the cows. Cox said officials used hay donated by a nearby farm to get the cows' attention, as well as <laughs> yellow cash and tape, which created a quote, corralled location. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, honey. Plus, with the help of a the good Samaritan. Is really cute. <laughs> I know. <laughs> with the help of a good Samaritan who offered his own trailer, the cattle found temporary ref- refuge. Meanwhile, a Columbia County deputy on the road stopped a vehicle that matched the wanted description, Cox said. Its driver confirmed the cows were his. <laughs> Quote, then he realized and became extremely worried about what that potentially could mean for cows on the highway. Not only for his cattle, obviously, but more importantly for travelers. You can imagine what would happen to a vehicle if it hit a cow, Cox that said. Wouldn't be great for the wouldn't cow that. or the vehicle. No, mm-hmm. nobody wins in that one. No. And that's Dan Daff. <laughs> he said the farmer did not violate any laws and is not facing any charges, adding that the investigation is pointing to a malfunction of trailer equipment as the cause. <laughs> <laughs> we know she loved Tammy, loved a good smoke after a ride. <laughs> Must have been smoking and driving. It's the vibrations, Ultra <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> After speaking personally with the farmer Tuesday, Cax reported the cows are doing well and healing from their injuries. <laughs> oh, they were probably on their way to the slaughterhouse. And- oh my God, can we not? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, they're minor injuries, but they're don't minor. Worry about them. They're still edible. <laughs> they're <It's> fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's horrible. I'm so sorry. All of the vegetarians and vegans are like, oh Listen, my God. It's a little it's pretenderization. <laughs> All right, I got a couple more here for you, but that one really, really allowed me, allowed me to tap into my my accent real nice. Uh, yeah, it was great. <laughs> I was just thinking while you were doing that, like, what if your parents, what if your dad had never gotten that job in Minnesota and you had never been brought to Minnesota, you never would have had this whole side of your personality. It's I it, it's part of my identity. I don't know. I, it's a gift. I don't it's know. A it's a gift. <laughs> a bear I can. Okay, this next one's for Lucy and a little bit of revenge yes. for Kenyon's disgusting coven confession oh, choices no. as of don't, recently. Don't make me puke. No. <laughs> no. Oh no. <laughs> Rethink your choices next time you pick a confession. <laughs> it was it was worth it. Those were All good. Right. Here we go. <laughs> oh my god. Super worth it. Pop up for ads. me. All right. <laughs> you can tell the quality of this article by the amount of pop ups. Here we go. Woman whose tongue was partially replaced by her thigh due to cancer says it quote started growing leg hair. What? <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> they they remade my belly with skin from with skin my from butt. my butt. <laughs> oh, yes. A woman whose tongue was partially replaced by a piece of her thigh due to cancer is opening up about her journey, including via a number of increasingly popular Tic Tac clips. Forty two year old Cameron Weeks Newsom, <laughs> as mentioned in a news flare sighting report from the New York Post this week, that rag. 
<laughs> suffered from severe pain following a 2013 diagnosis of squamous cell carcinoma, oh. which is the second most common form of skin cancer. Prior to diagnosis, Newsom, who credits her family, including husband Anthony and son Hudson, with helping through a difficult time, noticed white spots that formed on her tongue. Whoa. The spots initially tested negative for cancer with additional spots showing up the following year. Those spots also tested negative. Though Newman's Newsom's symptoms continued to get worse. Ultimately, a specialist diagnosed Newsom with stage four squamous <gasps> cells are carcinoma. Oh my God. No. Cancer is so hard to pronounce and B. <laughs> oh my yeah, God. That's I, wild. Never, I just, it never would have occurred to me to have skin cancer on, on your, your tongue. tongue. Yeah. I would think about like mouth cancer. Yeah. Or something. Right. And that the cells like wouldn't come back as cancerous. It's that's yeah, yeah it's wild. While treatment proved stressful, Newsom says she still needed to have the tumor removed by way of having a portion of her tongue cut out as part of an hours long procedure at the University of Texas's M.D. Anderson Cancer Center. They removed part or the removed part of Newsom's t- Newsom's tongue. Oh, my God. I can't fuck it. I'm tongue tied. How's, how's your tongue? Yeah. My tongue is not working. <laughs> Was replaced with muscle and skin that doctors took from her thigh. God, science is amazing. According to Newsom, quote, the weirdest part of the whole experience was when I felt a rough texture on the right part of my tongue. And when I looked in the mirror, it had started growing leg hair. Yes. Oh, my God. What did she do about it? No one ever told me or gave me the option to not have my tongue replaced, Newsom said, as seen in the clip above. They just said that I needed to have it in order to have a functional life. I would only have that much of a tongue, so I can't imagine what my speech would be like without it. So it's like, I'm happy that I did it. Yeah. Yeah. But I, it doesn't sound like they gave her Any all warning of the information. That, that would happen. Yeah, she needs a new. She needs a new doctor. The fact I that mean, they missed this cancer twice, and right? That it was stage four, and then nobody told her, "Hey, a possible side effect is that your tongue You're gonna is going to have leg hair in your mouth." Yeah. Oh god. In recent days, Newsom has also fielded additional questions about the procedure, including from a TikTok user seeking advice on how best to support someone going through a similar experience. Quote, anything that you can do to be by their side is so helpful, she said. So it sounds like she's like taking it all in stride and, you know, talking openly about it on TikTok and people are asking her questions and and learning from her. Crushing it. There are worse things than having a hairy tongue. Having to shave your tongue. Oh, I mean, thank goodness that it was caught and she's alive and and she was we were able to have that surgery and everything. But like I feel like Just give us all the info. I feel like nowadays doctors like just expect you to WebMD things and expect you to know more mm-hmm. than you do. Yes. Or like I WebMD things, but then I also take that information with a grain of salt. So then I still expect my doctor to like inform you. Get- yeah. yeah. Communicate Call about me treatments. I know. You are too much. Mm. <laughs> so high maintenance. <laughs> Just get a medical degree like it's hired. Yeah. God. <laughs> oh, I know. It's ridiculous. But, uh, you know, advocate for yourself. And if you do not feel comfortable advocating for yourself, I always recommend bringing a trusted advocate with you to the doctor. Yeah. Bring a friend, an older friend who has mm. been through some of their own shit. You need Maybe a mom. kind of bossy. Bring a mom. Yeah. Bring a mom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Doesn't have to be your mom. Just Mm-mm. bring bring a mom. Yeah. And moms come in all fa- all farms. Yep. Uh, moms are not a binary. No, anyone <laughs> who gives up mom energy. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, I got a couple more here for you. I I simply have no words for this one. As you know, it's very rare that I am speechless. But oh, this is amazing, and it might have been one of the most sent articles of the last month. So here we go. Two men take a corpse into Irish post office to claim his pension in Weekend at Bernie's scam. <laughs> That's only going to work once, max twice. Right. To the post office? Yeah. That's where they pick up their, that's where a lot of people your checks, in Europe Your pick pension up their, checks. Yeah. Oh. Body was dragged to counter and propped up by pair who put a jumper over his face and a hat on his head. (laughs) The corpse of a 66-year-old man was carried to a post office by two fraudsters in an alleged bid to claim his pension. 
and scenes reminiscent of the 1989 film Weekend at Bernie's. This is just my audition for being a very Midwestern news broadcaster. So yeah, yep. I know. I, you're loving it. You're it's also good at flight attendant voice, too. Yeah. Uh, yes, I am. But I can't switch over to that right mm-hmm. now because I'm in broadcaster mode. Here we oh, are. Okay. Got it. Got it. In the dark comedy movie, a pair of insurance <laughs> salesmen lug around the body of their murdered boss, pretending he's still alive, and lose and recover his corpse, which is clothed and wearing tinted glasses several times. <laughs> Irish police are investigating whether the elderly man, named locally as Peter Doyle, may have been dead for up to two days when yesterday morning's incident took place. Jesus. Mm-hmm. They, and That's... they don't suspect that these fraudsters killed him. Didn't. They just saw an opportunity. I think they are opportunists and not murderers. Okay. They are corpse. What a relief. I know. <laughs> They're just <laughs> corpse desecrators, not corpse yeah. creators. It's just not Creator. a, a not fun <laughs> sequel to Waking Ned Divine. Soup's not. Yeah, I, I love that movie. I fucking love that movie. I know. Can, why okay. don't they make well, more movies like that? The 90s, oh, no. man. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm watching that tonight. The fraudsters, one of whom knew the 66-year-old quite well, had put a jumper over Mr. Doyle's face and a hat on his head. Now, in the UK, jumpers are like shirts or sweaters or whatever. Mm-hmm. Sweatshirts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Both men who were in their 30s went into the post office and tried to get the money, but staff told them they needed his next of kin there or Mr. Doyle himself. So they went in first. to try to get it first. Okay. And they were like, you need someone to... You're not related to him, and why would we give you his money? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Nice try. Yep. So they were like, okay, well, we got to try this again. So afterwards, it is alleged that they went to Mr. Doyle's home and carried him along a public footpath before they <laughs> again tried to claim his pension. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh my- He's thumbing a raid. <laughs> oh, my God. I fucking cannot. <laughs> His appearance led an employee at the Hosey's shop in County Carlo to become concerned about his well-being, and she asked if he was unwell. (laughs) I am not well. (laughs) Never been better. (laughs) Oh, don't mind him. He's in a better place. Oh, shit. Oh, wait. Oh, crap. (laughs) The men are said to have told her that Mr. Doyle was always having a heart attack. And placed his body on the ground. Oh, oh, oh no. I, he's, he must be having a heart attack. Just hand over the check. Guard, guard, a, guard, I, like Gu- police and yeah. an ambulance were called as events yesterday unfolded and the men stayed at the post office making no attempt to escape. They're probably like, well, oh, fuck it. We're fucked. <laughs> One woman said her daughter saw the two men carry a man into the post office. Speaking to the Irish Independent, she said that the man looked unwell and that his feet were dragging on the ground. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, oh, my, my God. God. <laughs> there was a... God. I can't get over this. There, it's this not funny, real? but holy this shit. Is, this is definitely real? Yes. Oh, my God. I mean, it is now. <laughs> there was a queue outside of the post office at the time, and people had initially thought the man was having a heart attack. She said, quote, I feel awful for the staff. I have a 12-year-old daughter, and I'm trying to explain to her what happened. And, like, where do you start? It's awful. <laughs> Maybe don't. Maybe yeah, that just, daughter doesn't need to know. She's anything. 12. Let her forget that formative memory. <laughs> it if is my understood. parents didn't tell me that, I'd be oh, livid. Yeah, I know, right? never speak to them again. <laughs> yeah, no, this is real. There's, like, this is real. Are there photos? Yeah. <gasps> I didn't, I wasn't, like, doubt. I was just so. Uh, no, but I know. It's outrageous. The police are investigating if Mr. Doyle died at a nearby nearby property of natural causes. Residents and neighbors of Mr. Doyle are sad and shocked after the incident. He was described as a lovely man and neighbor by one and another said it had been a sad night and a shock to hear about this. So, like, how did he like what relationship did he have to these fraudsters before his death? I don't know. He knew, like, how did he them? die? And they're like. He knew he knew one of them. I'm not sure how. I th- this is like pretty recent, so I hope we'll find out. But I don't have that information. Tell us. I don't We're know. Holding information, Amanda. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> wow, the mayor was... of Carlo, Ken Murnane, said, I was absolutely shocked to hear about what happened. I cannot believe anyone would do something like that. It's beggar's belief. I'm just shocked. <laughs> yeah. 
A police spokesperson said police are investigating all the circumstances surrounding the unexplained death of an elderly male in the Carlo area on Friday morning. So he's not they're like still looking that into it. Elderly either. He, no, he's only sixty six. Like yeah. that it's not to say he can't he couldn't have had a heart attack and died right. if they you know, but But it's not uh, like he was ninety six. No. No, no, no. Huh. Yeah, it's nuts. So a post they're doing an autopsy. A postmortem will be conducted by the Office of the State Pathologist, the results of which will determine the course of the investigation. No other, no further information is available at this time. So I think they're just waiting for, like, autopsy results and making arrests accordingly. Because at this, or at least when this article was published, they hadn't arrested these guys yet because they're probably trying to figure out if they can arrest them for more than just fucking desecration of a corpse yeah <laughs> they're probably trying to stack some charges so they're and waiting fraud. to get all the yeah all the information first oh my goodness. i know it's Guys, amazing it's not worth it one it's fucking not. pension check split yeah, no. between the two of you it's yes. not worth it definitely not definitely not worth it oh my god this next one has a photo that i didn't realize it had so yes, i'm yes, adding yes, this yes, 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 yes. okay i have two more <laughs> okay <laughs> I just we we still don't and may never have the answer to the question why are men? Mm. It, it, okay, man trying to cure erectile dysfunction accidentally squirts insulation foam up his penis. No, no. and a medical photo no. of the removed insulation foam yes. has just yes. been added yes. to the drive. No. Wow. Uh, yeah. The hamburger meat? Yeah. Oh. What? Oh. Yeah. That? Yeah. That? The the pink, the red? Yep. Well, that's the foam. Yep. Because of the blood. With blood. It got covered. Yeah. <gasps> and it expands. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh. The whole dick explode? I, let's see what they'll tell us. Oh, my God. Yeah. An unfortunate case published in Urology Case Reports, hold on, hold my beer while I subscribe, <laughs> has detailed how a man and his partner accidentally, which uh, I'm, it's not in quotes, but I'm putting it in quotes, mm -hmm. squirted insulation foam up the man's urethra in an attempt to mitigate his erectile dysfunction. No, 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 no. There's pills for that. Yeah, like a lot of pills. Yep. The 45-year-old man showed up to the emergency room with trouble urinating yeah, and no blood shit. in his urine <gasps> when on the rare occasions he was able to relieve himself. He and his partner reported to the doctors that they had often inserted various objects into his urethra as an aid for erectile dysfunction. That's not how that works. Nope. No. During one attempt three weeks prior to his admission, his partner had inserted, quote, <gasps> she gasped. <laughs> Oh, God. Inserted quote. <laughs> <laughs> that was perfect. <laughs> I mean, like, I know, but seeing it. Okay. His partner had inserted, quote, a straw attached to a can of weatherproofing spray foam before inadvertently pressing the button, deploying the foam. Uh, the little tiny like WD forty straw shoved I can, up his pee pee I can hole. Picture it. Yep. So he was just trying to use the straw, I or don't he think was so. trying to blast foam up his dick. I, I, I don't mean. think you accidentally press that and release that much foam. It's not that easy to even press. I've used those yeah. things. Yeah. yeah. And if you're just using the straw, then detach it from the can uh -huh. first. Right. right. There's right. no way. There's no fucking way they were not intentionally spraying and the foam. foam hardens. <laughs> oh, yes, it nah. does, ma'am. And, and it's a really, I mean, it's just It's brutal. heavy duty. It's meant for like outdoor use. L literally, we've used it to like repair cracks in our home. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Following its purpose. Following the incident, he had problems urinating, which had progressively gotten worse. You don't say. A CT scan revealed that. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> the foam. This is why it's so big, you guys. The foam had made its way up 
his urethra and into his bladder. Yeah. That's why it's a big lump. I'm in so much pain thinking about this. Well, that's how could it, it did what it's supposed to do. Right. I'm, I'm going to throw up. How could he? <laughs> how could he? I'm going to throw walk. up. Like several. I mean, I don't know how he could last several days without such excruciating pain. Like, I, I, I. Oh, I'm thinking Shane about like the worst. Way. U- yeah, I guess like the worst UTIs I've ever had can't even have been this bad. It's no. just this no. is horrific. Plus toxicity. Yeah, the man was taken for a cystotomy, where the team was able to remove the spray foam from his bladder. However, his urethra had been narrowed by scarring, yeah. likely from other objects that had been inserted into it, which meant that they were oh, unable God. to remove the foam from its way. Oh, God. So what does that mean? From it in this way. Sorry, I screamed and got ahead of myself. In a separate operation known as a perennial urethrostomy, they went into the urethra through a hole they created in his perineum, a.k.a. taint. Yep. Yep. A.k.a. taint is written in the article. Yeah. Oh, no. The team were able to retrieve the remaining foam from his urethra Oh, I have the foam that was in the urethra. Hold on, I got a photo. Yeah. Adding it to the shot. Yes. This is just a urethra shot. This is just what was in the urethra. Uh, but- <laughs> they look like flaming Hot Cheetos. Ah! Oh, they do. <laughs> oh, my God. Jerk chicken. Amanda. Oh, can you cut? <laughs> oh, oh, no. Oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> God damn oh, you! you look the look the like hairy tongue hats. didn't get her, but this sure did. <laughs> oh my! Oh God. my God! Okay, so the team were able to re- retrieve the remaining foam from his urethra, though his urethra will require further operations to repair it in the future. They highlighted that in these cases, mental illness, borderline personality disorder, sexual gratification, and occasionally attempting to gain temporary release from imprisonment often play a role. Mm-hmm. Ugh. From imprisonment, I they don't get know. to go to the hospital. Oh, was yeah, he I guess. in prison? No, no. no. But they're just saying a, a lot of feeling times of people imprisonment. Do that. People do like crazy shit to their dicks get, yeah. under these circumstances. Yeah. Uh, wow. Unf- quote: Unfortunately, many patients are repeat repeated offenders, and the psychiatric evaluation to prevent recurrent injury should be considered. Our patient achieved a stable relationship partner, but has seen has been homeless and thus sporadically followed up with suprapubic tube changes. I don't know what any of that means from medical journal. It Mm. sounds like he's not taking care of it because he's unhoused and it's going to get infected. Mm -hmm. Fuck. Yeah. He has not been referred to psychiatry as he has not had any repeat episodes since this operation, but would be referred prior to consideration of reconstruction when he achieves a stable living environment. Holy shit. Wow. Whoo. Well, I I hope this guy gets help. And I really hope so, too, because my God, the pain. The ground beef photo goes is down. Oh, yeah. absolutely it's absolutely insane. It's ins- it looks like we're ready to make a meatloaf. It looks like a brain. Yeah. Yeah, it does. All right. I will cleanse your palates with my last one. This is the douche of the month winner. Ooh. And many, many, many people sent and tweeted and DM'd this. So I had to include it. A museum guard draws eyes on a pricey painting due to Bardem. Yes, I saw this. <laughs> There's a picture of it on the drive. It's amazing. I kind of like the eyes. <laughs> a valuable avant-garde painting of uh, artist Anna Leporsaikas. Leporsaikas. Three figures painting valued roughly at $1 million was vandalized by a bored security guard who was on his first and obviously last day at work. It was his first first day. day. (laughs) He couldn't handle the boredom. So original and with eyes. (laughs) (laughs) I know. I love the side by side. The 90 year old painting was on exhibit at the Yeltsin Center in Yekaterinburg. And it was on loan from Moscow State Tretekov Gallery, Russia. Okay. No. (laughs) No, I'm not. As part of an exhibit titled The World as Non Objectivity, The Birth of a New Art. Okay, cool. 
The original painting had three figures with blank faces, but the board security guard drew two pairs of eyes on the painting with a ballpoint pen. With a pen. <laughs> a a ballpoint pen, like a Bic. Yeah. <laughs> the painting was sent to the gallery. I'm not going to try to pronounce this again. A day after the incident and inspected by a restorer. The restorer stated that the damage could be repaired without permanently damaging the artwork and that it would cost approximately $32,000, oh which God. is an acceptable amount compared to the painting's 972,000. Yeah. 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 I'm, sure the, I'm sure the insurance company yeah. is like That's that. The it's insurance like... value is like just under a million, so yeah. they're going to just take care of it. In the original without eyes, you kind of can see phantom eyes. Oh, yeah. He didn't just plop eyes willy-nilly. He, mm-hmm. he saw the artist's intention mm-hmm. of the hint, hint of, of, was hint the of eye. <laughs> yep. yep. He was just bored. Yep. Yep. <laughs> So the it, the unidentified, like unreleased name of the security guard, he's 60 years old. He worked for a private security company and he has been fired. A full investigation was launched by the Russian Ministry of Culture and the guard could face a $534 fine and a one year labor sentence. Oh, God. I mean, that's probably a lot of money in Russia. It's about to be a shit ton of money in yeah, Russia really. because sure the ruble is. is fucked. So it's not great. Uh, like what it obviously don't let this man around art anymore. Yeah. yeah. But like, what else are you going to do? Mm-hmm. You know, it was a, it was a shenanigan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Quote, his motives are still unknown, but the administration believes it was some kind of lapse in sanity. Fortunately, <laughs> the vandal drew with a pen without strong pressure and therefore the relief of the strokes as a whole was not disturbed. The left figure also had a small crumble of the paint layer up to the underlying layer on the face, she said. But these are like pretty easy, at least for art restorers to repair. Yep. So it's being repaired. The guy's been fired. He's probably not going to have a whole lot of fun wherever he's sent. Oh, God. To do his labor work. And don't draw on anything in a museum. Don't ever don't do it. If you're not sure if it's art, yep, just, just don't touch. Air on the side of it's art, and don't just touch it. Don't fucking touch it. Yep. All right. Anyway, well, uh, go shave your tongues, and those are my headlines. <laughs> Amazing. Wow. Well, I will never. I will never recover <laughs> from the urethra one. Well, you'll definitely never handle ground beef again. Uh, uh no, no, mm-hmm. I will not. <laughs> Uh, I, I already uh, no. didn't like to do that. Yeah. Well, yeah. You're welcome. Let's take That's... a quick ad break here from our sponsors. <laughs> and maybe Kenyon has to go gag into a toilet somewhere. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> All right. We'll be right back. If you don't want to have to choose between comfort and style, you need to pick Rafi's. Mm-hmm. They have so many different types of shoes. And I have most of them. All of them. (laughs) (laughs) They have bold statement sneakers. Check. I have this like darling pair of like very French looking sneakers from Rafi's. So cute. They have simple and elegant boots. They have the point. They have a round toe. They've got Mary Jane. They've got everything. And their signature seamless knit designs mean that all their shoes look and feel great right out of the box with no break-in period. That is no joke. Their material mm-hmm. is like kind of stretchy. It's, mm-hmm. uh, it's absolutely, it feels so good on your feet. So Rafi's best sellers are the Point and the Flat. And People Magazine named the Point the best flat for their first ever style awards in 2021. They are so dang cute. They will dress up any outfit. Mm -hmm. You can be wearing anything and you put on those points and you're like, yeah, I'm going to a board meeting. Yeah. I get compliments on my Rothy's points every single time I wear them. Every Mm -hmm. time. I got a compliment from like a super manly guy who I never would have expected to notice my shoes. Mm-hmm. And I was wearing these like multi cut like kind of technicolored loafers because the loafer style is my personal favorite. So cute. And he's like, gosh, those are really cute shoes. <laughs> yeah. Like, heck yeah, yeah, they yeah. are, sir. Yeah. And they're and- machine washable. Can you believe? That's exactly what I said. <laughs> Just throw them and in would the- you like a photo all together <laughs> while I'm here? Throw them in the washing machine. They come out good as new. It's my favorite part about 
the Rothys. They also make, like Kenyon said, insanely comfortable sneakers, loafers, ankle boots, and more. The best part is that everything Rothys makes is better for the planet. So their shoes, their bags, they Rothys makes so many cute things. They've repurposed millions of water bottles into their signature thread that goes into every single one of their products. So between the comfort, the washability, and the durability, it, it you will not find a better shoe than Rothy's. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is correct. So get both style and comfort this spring with Rothy's. Plus, get $20 off your first purchase at rothys.com forward slash gals. That's R-O-T-H-Y-S dot com slash gals. And treat your feet. Treat them. Um, so I don't know if it's just like the change in the seasons, but I have felt so absolutely like stuck just stalled lately mm-hmm. yep i don't know what it is and i know it's i'm not it's never ending winter for me yeah <laughs> i know i'm not the only one dealing with this and there are so many different approaches to helping you not feel like that right so whatever challenges you're facing in your mental health whether you're struggling with low self esteem you know self-worth like me or being like stuck if if you've got body image issues anxiety or anything else there is no one size fits all solution and with work school and relationships pulling you in every direction it can be really hard to find time to focus on what you really need like you need Mm -hmm. time and a quiet room Mm -hmm. and like maybe a pen and paper Mm -hmm. yeah it's a lot of work to like make your brain feel better (laughs) <laughs> yeah. And this is why Talkspace's online therapy gives you unlimited access to a licensed therapist so you can set aside time to put yourself first. Talkspace is a gift mm-hmm. from the heavens. The, the online heavens. Mm-hmm. It is so amazing. And I can very much relate to what Lucy is talking about. I'm like deep in my we are not yet at spring. Winter will not leave like seasonal effective mental health hole yeah a hole it is a dark hole down here <laughs> let me tell you and it's just like everything seems harder to do i mean i've been in a bathrobe all day people i i like i everything feels harder mm-hmm. and i know that so many people often face similar struggle struggles i know that there are a lot of people listening right now who are like yep girl i know how you feel feels like you're walking through jello But everybody's path to healing looks different. Even if a lot of us are on the same ocean, we're not necessarily in the same boat. Mm -hmm. So no matter where you are in your mental health journey, you deserve better care than generalized advice cobbled together from Dr. Google. Okay. Oh, yeah. (laughs) That's why talking to a real mental health professional is so important. Talkspace has thousands of licensed therapists across dozens of specialties. So you can connect with someone that's trained for just what you need. And you can take care of your mental health on your time at your pace, like Lucy said. Instead of a therapist squeezing you into their busy schedule, Talkspace fits into yours and like literally fits into your pocket because you can do it on your phone. With 24-7 asynchronous messaging, you can talk about what's on your mind in the moment without having to wait for an appointment. And you also have access to chat, video, or audio options for live sessions so you can get support on your own terms from any device depending on what you need. A lot of times I just want to send a text, but other times I really want to talk on the phone or get that face-to-face, you know, like level up. And your privacy is also a priority. Talkspace has encryption and added security features to keep your conversations secure. So what are you waiting for? Get the one size fits one support that you need with Talkspace. Sign up today at Talkspace.com and get $100 off your first month with promo code GALS, G-A-L-S. That's $100 off at Talkspace.com, promo code GALS, and treat your brain. Treat Treat it. it. All right. Are we ready for some coven confessions? Yes. Always my favorite. my favorite time of the month. <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't know if there's a theme. I didn't take the time to discern if there's a theme or not, but the That's theme fine. the theme is I thought these were funny. I love that theme. Okay. Number 1. Quote. Okay, so I love my mother-in-law, but <laughs> she can be a bit much at times. Who can't? <laughs> my husband and I got married in January of this year, so they wrote this in 2021. And had a small ceremony of about 20 people. We wanted to elope originally, but then decided to have at least some family present to celebrate the day with us, taking precautions, of course. Mm -hmm. 
Since it was such a small ceremony and we didn't have a reception, we wanted to keep things as cheap and simple as possible. We met with our officiant and planned the ceremony to be about 10 to 15 minutes. All of our decorations were borrowed from my mom's friend. I got my dress online for 100 bucks, and my parents made most of the food. So I feel like... This is so cute. I love it. It's so cute. It's like such a cute, casual, intimate wedding. Mm -hmm. It's practically an elopement. I love it. It's perfect. My mother-in-law, for some reason, did not like the simplicity of everything. Mm. Mom's... Well, it's not her day. Right. So... Weddings, man. Mm -hmm. Weddings make everyone fucking crazy. Insane. Mm -hmm. I don't get it. She would call almost every day asking what she could do to help, which I appreciate very much, but there was literally nothing else to do. Mm -hmm. She had a big ass cake made for us, even though we said we wanted cupcakes for everyone to have. But she said we had to, quote, follow tradition and save the bottom layer to eat on our anniversary. No one needs to do that. I think that's gross. It's disgusting. Who wants old cake? year old cake? Yeah. yeah, a frozen year old cake. I'm good. Even though my husband was deploying shortly after our wedding and won't be here for our first anniversary. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. cool. Got it. So this we didn't, makes sense. So we didn't want to save anything for that long because then it would be for like their second anniversary. Mm-hmm. Ish. She also chewed me out because I kindly declined her offer of getting us a nice bottle of wine and some wine glasses after explaining that I get a rash from wine and my husband doesn't like wine. Mm-hmm. Here comes the confession part. Your husband, her son. Yeah. <laughs> well, she took it personally, obviously. Like, yeah. Oh, God. Like, I understand the parental urge to want to, like, do, do something stuff. and give something for that day. But, like, listen to the person you're ostensibly trying to help Mm -hmm. anyway here comes the confession part which i kind of feel guilty for but also not really (laughs) since we got married in the heat of covid i made a zoom link to share with a few close friends and family who couldn't make it in person Mm -hmm. i told my mother-in-law about the link and she asked if she could send it to her aunts i agreed and gave it to her since she said it would only be sent to two or three people Oh, no. What did she fucking do? I found out two days before the wedding that the link was sent to over 70 people. (gasps) Oh, my God. I mean, you may as well just fucking post it on social media at that point, if that's what you're going to do. Some of which weren't even family members and had definitely never even met me or my husband. Uh, I'd be so annoyed by that. I was fed up with her knocking my plans and changing everything to fit her ideas. I made a new link and sent it to the people I originally planned on giving it to. Good girl. Good girl. I set it up on my computer for the ceremony, and she came up to ask why the link wasn't working because everyone was calling and texting her. Mm -hmm. I just said, oh, that's weird, and continued on with my day. It's my my wedding day. day. I can't deal with this right now. Bye. I would have done the same thing. Uh huh. Maybe it was selfish of me to do that, but we had both taken enough criticism from her at that point. Our wedding was amazing, even if it wasn't exactly how we planned it. And I've since learned how to speak up to her more, especially since my husband isn't here. Love the podcast and keep being spooky bitches. Good for wow. you, honey. Good yeah, you for crushed you. it. No, yes. that was amazing. No, none. You did I, the right thing. Mm-hmm. I admire you. It never would have occurred to me to do that. Yeah, you're smart. You're smart. You're smart. And. She she broke your trust. Yeah, in in it's saying she was going to send it to two people. Too far. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and it's mm-hmm. not her day. Nope, mama so, fucked up. Yeah, yep. and I hope that your husband stays safe, well deployed. Mm-hmm. Next one quote: I was walking my dog one day when I passed a trailer by the side of the road next to the library. The trailer reeked. Uh Oh, Oh. (laughs) Lucy's so happy. (laughs) She's like, what did it smell like? Did he keep it? (laughs) Did he keep it? (laughs) How would you describe the reek? In detail. (laughs) Is it like a reek that you feel on like an evolutionary level? (laughs) Is there a subtle sweetness to the reek? (laughs) (laughs) Would it cling to the inside of your nostrils, would you say? Yeah, Did you have to wash your clothes mm-hmm. multiple times from proximity to the reek? Did it inspire existential dread? <laughs> 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 
<laughs> my dog was very interested in yeah. the trailer. No! And while pulling her back, I looked through the screen door to see that a man was laying in the trailer with his head <gasps> Kind of drooping down where the steps to the door were. Oh, he's dead, honey. Oh, yeah, he is. The whole trailer <laughs> also reeked of trash and, uh, and something else. Poo. <laughs> Slightly Un- sweet. Fortunately, I was very focused on getting my dog away and only thought about calling the police for a welfare check because I thought the man was passed out drunk. Even though when I saw him, it was another one of those moments where you just know something is wrong. Mm-hmm. Basically, they're just in denial. Yeah. Your body, your brain is protecting you. Yeah. That's what's happening. It's not your fault. Yeah. I didn't because my dog was a handful and I didn't want to bother the man if he was just sleeping a binge off. Oh, my God. A few days later, there was a news article about a man who had been shot and killed (gasps) along with his German shepherd in his trailer at that exact intersection. So there was a dead dog in there, too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Which is probably no. even more what that dog was going nuts yeah. over. Yeah. Right. Oh. It had taken days for the police to find his body. They did confirm foul play, but that was all the article said. If I had called that day, it wouldn't have saved him, but at least they would have found the body sooner. Wow. I highly regret it, but now I know how someone can find a dead body and not do anything about it because for whatever reason, and in this case, I just didn't want to bother the poor guy. Mm-hmm. They didn't want to be rude. Wow. Wow. Yeah, fuck politeness. Next time, I'll just make the damn call. Oh, my God. <sighs> this is like at the restaurant I used to work at. One of the employees on New Year's puked in the <laughs> alleyway outside <laughs> the door where we, like, take out the garbage. Mm-hmm. And one of our regulars used to... <laughs> He's this, like, older guy, and he used to walk his dog in that alleyway, like, every day, and then stop by and say hello, and, like, we'd all say hello to the dog, and, like, give this guy a scone and whatever. And he came by a couple days after New Year's, and he's like, oh, my gosh, what is that soup you guys threw out in the alleyway? My dog won't stop eating it. (laughs) The dog was just licking the frozen Did you tell him? No, no, we we that dog went to its grave thinking it had great soup that day. Oh, my God. <laughs> Wait, the dog is dead now. Oh, yeah. This from is the a while soup. Ago. Oh, okay. not from the soup. The The dog is it was just been enough time. Yeah. Yes. That it's, it's likely dead. I thought it died late. The <laughs> was, way you said it kind of made it sound <laughs> like the dog died later. Imminently. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the funniest thing. I killed this dog. Well, I didn't. <laughs> but my coworker kind of did. Oh, no. My, I am so fucking glad that Josie is not a eat yeah. gross things she finds dog. Uh, mm-hmm. Callie is. It's. Yeah. Uh, loves loves a litter box. Loves those crunchy uh, treats. Uh, ew. Oh, God, ew. <laughs> uh, speaking of finding dead bodies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so my sister's friend, who shall go unnamed, uh, she, I was with her a few weeks ago, and she was telling me about how this last summer, like August-ish, July-ish, she was living in an apartment building in Denver, And one day she went out to go walk her dog and there were like cops everywhere. Mm. And they were like, "Uh, do you live here? And she's like, yeah. (laughs) They were like, "Uh, you might want to go shut your windows. Uh, Those are. And she was like, oh, what? She was like, yeah, there's a deceased body in one of these cars that's been here for quite a while. And we're about to open it. It's, <gasps> it's about to waft. It's oh about God. to get serious. So she went back to, and shut her windows. And then I think she went and took her dog out for a walk, went the other way. But she t- somehow t- she took a video of them pulling the guy out of the car, or like looking around in the car. And she oh. showed me the video and it's really intense. But apparently oh this guy God. died in his car like a fucking week earlier no. from a... What? From a is- drug overdose. Oh, well, it's so sad. Yeah. We- yeah. Oh, my God. Fuck. Yeah, and yep. she was like, I walk my dog twice a day. I walked past that car. And but just it had, had no like, idea. It had tinted windows. You don't 
often like look Honestly, inside a car and yeah, it's in a, a, par- it's in a parking just, lot. We're going about our day minding our own business 99% of right. the time. Right. I am the easiest target because I'm the least observant person. I'm ever. oblivious. I'm not fucking paying attention. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm listening to a podcast and trying to figure out if my dog is going to shit three or five times and if I brought enough bags. Yep. (laughs) That's all I'm thinking about on a walk. Mm -hmm. Do you have a little poop bag carrier on the leash? I don't. We just reuse. I know. We just reuse and recycle plastic bags Mm -hmm. that we have like a bottomless drawer of, even though we, I feel like, haven't gone anywhere that uses plastic bags in forever. But, you know, Mm -hmm. we like reuse all the bags. (laughs) <laughs> they do. And like bread, mm-hmm. bags, all that shit, we reuse it. Mm-hmm. So, you know. Anyway. Okay. Well, there's that. Okay. <laughs> Got a few more. Quote, this is by far the worst thing I've ever done. However, unlike many other confessions, the victim here was only myself. Oh, okay. This a act- little, Yeah, a little self burn. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this act was so heinous. That my subconscious pushed it deep into the darkest folds of my brain. Oh, oh God. And I only realized the full weight of my actions in my early 20s. Okay, we're getting a repressed memory. Got yep. it. I love the repressed memory of what people did when they were kids. Uh, it's this is going to be good. When I was five or six, my mom and I were at a music festival. She's not a regular mom. She's a cool mom. Oh, yeah. I had to pee, so I ran over to the bank of porta potties and did my thing. I came back and told my mom that the porta potty I used had a sink in it. That was the end of the memory. Okay. Until oh. one day. Not a sink. Oh. Fast forward several years, like more than several. I was 23, driving to college, and suddenly that memory came into my mind. <gasps> but this time it was like I was watching the memory with all the knowledge my 23 year old brain had gained. I would have driven off the road. I would have. <laughs> careened into a, a, a river. Ditch. Yes. This is worse than you think. No! Oh. I saw myself going into the porta potty peeing, seeing the sink, which was actually a plastic urinal complete yep. with a urinal cake. No. Uh-oh. She used the soap. <laughs> I saw my little hands grabbing the <laughs> urinal cake. And proceeding to rub it all over my hands and face. (laughs) Because I thought it was some kind of moist but waterless bar of soap. What? Oh, Oh, is she she actually gagging? Was was that a real? No. (laughs) (laughs) Oh. I then happily hopped out and went back to my mom feeling clean and refreshed. Clean as a whistle. Oh. Oh. I have only ever told one person about this event. I am 30 now, and it has only been in the last eight months or so that I can even admit to myself that this happened. Oh, my God. So, yeah, I washed my face with beer piss at a multi-day festival in a porta potty. <laughs> Oh my fucking god. So good. Oh Oh my god. Love you all. I too am a crazy rabbit lady and Albus and Blanche updates keep me alive. Stay safe. And make sure you know what something is before you rub it on your face. That's always good advice. I appreciate that. Wow. Wow. I love that this memory came back while this while person driving was driving. <laughs> no. And they're like, oh, oh, oh. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, no. I would and have to like pull another... over immediately and, like, scrub myself. I'm telling you, I would drive off a cliff if I, if this, like, happened. <laughs> And I would then lose another control. seven years went by before they could really process it. <laughs> <laughs> they had to find a good therapist. Holy shit. That is so good. 
<laughs> oh my god, it's so fucking gross. That was so fucking gross. I hate it. I love it. I hate it. I love it. I hate oh it. my god. All right. Uh, oh. we, got a, we got a couple more. <laughs> Quote, my coven confession is that I've been actively lying to a blind man for about three years. <laughs> um... <laughs> And purposely oh. altering, changing, Pretty disguising, bird. changing Pretty my bird. voice each time I have to speak to him. Oh, what? No. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, he, he might fucking know. knows. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, yeah. that's what yeah. I think, too. He fucking knows. He knows it. You are a mess. So, they have a reason. But... Oh, good. Okay. Is it a good reason? I want. I can't wait to hear the reason for tricking a blind man for many years. You're gonna. You're gonna eat your urinal cake. Okay. Oh, I am, yeah. Oh, am I? <laughs> urinal I'm cake in have your urinal face. Urinal cake all over my face. Oh, egg in your face. Urinal cake all over my face. What is a boy to do? So out of context, this sounds really bad. Yeah, I know. It does. It really fucking does. But in my defense, <laughs> remember that one confession. Yes. I don't even remember what it was, but we we're like, in to my be defense, fair though. To be fair, it was to be fair though. <laughs> we went on forever. But like, to be fair. Okay, but <laughs> to be fair, though. Uh, but in my defense, I run into a lot of creeps as a city mail carrier with a walking route. Oh. Mm -hmm. As a woman walking alone in an area that has a lot of apartment buildings, alleyways, rear deliveries, etc., I have to be extremely cautious. Anyway, there's a blind man who sits on his porch and who I used to try to be friendly with. He began making awkward attempts at hitting on me even after I politely declined over and over again. I started to become very uncomfortable and if he was inside with the door open, I would just tiptoe up, drop the mail in the box fast and then kind of <laughs> run away. Fair enough. <laughs> Do you think that's what my mail carrier does? <laughs> Probably. Yes. Maxine. Oh my god, that's the woman who's obsessed with me. I got to I got to tiptoe. <laughs> This only worked, though, if he wasn't sitting directly on the porch already. On those days, his behavior got even worse, and one day he even mentioned how many guns he has. Oh, no. All right. And All that right. the women who refuse him dates, quote, can't refuse him forever. Oh, my God. Ew. Yeah. It's a hips like two battleships situation. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I support you doing whatever you need to to be safe in this situation and also like report this shit. Yeah. Report him and also like he. You knows, shouldn't even have to do this you. fucking mail route if this fucker right. is going to be harassing you. Mm -hmm. Right. So long story short, for the past three years, I either make as little noise as possible or I change my footsteps slash gate while I walk on his porch I have said hi a couple of times, but always in different voices. <laughs> and once Top made of the muffin to you. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oi, mate. Oi. <laughs> and once made up a random name in a new fake voice and said that I, the real me, was no longer his mail carrier and switched to a new route. Oh, she died. Oh, she <laughs> She died. She it's gone. crazy, man. She died. <laughs> anyway, it's kind of a fun game to change my character every day, and I'm not sorry. The end. <laughs> Listen, you're right. I'm eating my urinal cake. There you I go. support it. See? But I also just don't think you should have to do that fucking mail route. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, right, right, right. it's what it's. And they yeah. found a solution, so whatever. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. To be fair though. To be fair, fair though. though. Sometimes you can lie to blind people. Listen, you can be disabled and, and a creep. still be an asshole. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, hi, I'm I'm the perfect example. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one more. So this person has they them pronouns. We were in the process of selling my late parents' house, our childhood home, and one winter day, the pipes burst and completely destroyed part of it. Like, oh, no. destroyed. Oh, no. I'm too scared to go into specifics in case my fa family ever find out, but I'd say it was close to $50,000 of work. Ooh. Ooh. Yep. That's 
That's not fun. When we called the insurance company, they said we hadn't renewed our coverage, but we had never been sent a notice that the coverage was coming to an end. Which this is like, my worst fear as a homeowner. Like, I wait, do I have insurance? I know. I need to double check. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And you should. Mm-hmm. Just check every three months. Why not? Yeah, why not? Or so we thought. So they they said they never got it, the notice. Or so we thought. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. The insurance company took the blame and ended up covering the whole thing, which like that is a miracle. Yeah, yeah. it really is. Including the remodeling of the section of the house that was damaged. This worked out perfectly because the house needed to be updated before we put it on the market anyway. Mm-hmm. Later that year, my sibling and I were rummaging through old mail. Uh-oh, uh-oh. And found the notice from the insurance company. We looked at each other and knew exactly what we had to do. That night, we made a fire outside yep. and threw the papers into the flames. Keep your goddamn mouth shut. <laughs> I mean, never to be spoken of again. Again, I would have done the same thing. Absolutely. Listen, <laughs> you technically didn't get the notice at the time that you told the company that you didn't get the notice. Yeah. It's also you, an, you insurance insurance company. It's an insurance company. It's an insurance company. This is what they're made to fucking do yeah, is right. pay to fix your fucking house. Yeah. Just because fuck there's em. like some little technicality, like whatever, fuck them. Yeah. So Good on ya. We are the only two in our family that know anything about this fortunate yet criminal mishap. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. I, I, wow. I say good on ya. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I salute you. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's not exploitative if you're exploiting an exploitative uh, institution. It's a victimless crime. Yeah. It really is. You've been paying your premium. There was a small lapse. You missed the notice. You're mm-hmm. human. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's they could have called. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They didn't fucking do their yeah, due diligence. Where was the second notice? Right? Where's mm-hmm. the email? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This isn't... They don't, it's not fucking carrier pigeons and... Oh, for God's sakes. Mm-hmm. Fuck them. Fuck them. Gal. Gal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so those are the coven confessions this month. Those are nice. good ones. <laughs> oh, good, yeah, good, good Good ones. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Let's take another quick break, and then we'll get to Corner Corner. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Warby Parker was founded with a rebellious spirit and a lofty goal to create boutique quality eyewear at a revolutionary price point, offering eyeglasses, sunglasses, contact lenses, and eye exams. Warby Parker is committed to providing exceptional vision care online and in stores. Warby Parker carries a wide variety of contact lens brands like AccuView and Biofinity. They're not just glasses. Like Kenyon mm-hmm. said, you got the eye exams, you got the contacts, they've got sunglasses. Mm-hmm. They have, I love my prescription sunglasses because before I got them from Warby Parker, I was just wearing regular sunglasses yeah. over she my was, eyeglasses. She was doubling up. It was this was like scary a, a while thing. driving. It was like a thing. Well, like I, I, it's a, it was a look. I have <laughs> a signature look. I have. Horrible eyesight, so I just, I can't, I can't drive without glasses. Anyway, Mm. needless to say, Warby Parker saved my, uh, style, my fashion life. And all of our lives. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Saved a lot. (laughs) My favorite thing about Warby Parker is that they have a free home try-on program, so you go on their website or in their app. You can order five pairs of glasses to try on at home for free for five days. There's no obligation to buy. It ships for free and includes a prepaid return shipping label. It is so dang easy. You can poll your friends and family to see which frames look the best on you. That's always Mm -hmm. my favorite. I feel like every couple of months, like somebody in our main friend chat group (laughs) orders from Morby and and has their (laughs) at-home try on and we all vote. It's It's like, okay, heart your favorite and thumbs up your second favorite and we're going to narrow it down. That's what we do in our chat. Uh, It literally is. I also have a pair of their blue light filtering lenses because I'm staring at one screen or another all day, every day. And it just mm-hmm. helps my, I don't know if this is scientific, but it helps my brain feel less swollen just mm-hmm. from those <laughs> those, those <laughs> lenses. They sure. really help a lot. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> sure. I'm not a doctor, 
but <laughs> it's how I, she feels. I, I, it's just yes, how I it's feel. How she feels. <laughs> I love it. So, like Lucy said, Warby Parker carries a wide variety of contact lens brands, and you can save 15% on your first order of contacts. Savings are automatically applied at checkout. Visit warbyparker.com forward slash gals, all lowercase, to save 15% on your first order of contact lenses and treat your eyes. Um, So we are awash in a beautiful sea of true crime podcasts, and even though we live and breathe true crime podcasts we still have our favorites and one of those is true crime bullshit with our friend josh hallmark if you have not listened you are seriously missing out so Mm -hmm. season five of true crime bullshit continues its investigation into serial killer israel keys if you have not heard of israel keys he is absolutely one of the most bonkers and horrifying it's horrific. killers of all time. Absolutely fascinating. And Josh does such an amazing job mm-hmm. covering all of his horrific crimes. And actually, the season premiered by covering a John Doe case that this podcast helped to solve. It's so wild. It's real Amaz- investigations. It's amazing yeah. what Josh is doing. Mm-hmm. And this season, host Josh Hallmark, who we cannot stop raving about, interviews key witnesses, literally trudges through the woods looking for clues, like all the things we would never do, Mm -hmm. and works with forensic psychologist superstar Dr. Christopher Kunkel. And the show continues to move at a breakneck speed as it unravels Israel Key's mysteries and exposes his secrets. And the final two hours of season five uh, will leave you breathless. I am breathless. Yeah. (laughs) True Crime Bullshit is one of my favorite podcasts of all time. I'm I'm Mm -hmm. so excited to tell you guys about it. So join Josh Hallmark in bringing Israel Keys' worst fears to life, exposing his true crime bullshit. Listen to True Crime Bullshit anywhere you listen to podcasts. Okay. Let's get to some uh, creepy corner corner shit, shall we? Yeah. Amanda's scared. Uh, uh, Amanda has like a Pavlovian negative response to corner corner. (laughs) Yes, I do. (laughs) And Coven Confessions. This just isn't your... (laughs) Yeah. This isn't your bag. But that's Mm -hmm. okay. Well, I'm just going to rip this off like a Band-Aid. I'm going to start with a new fear for Amanda. Yep. Okay, this is why I don't like corner corner. <laughs> I, I love the stories. I wasn't it's wondering why. I know exactly why. <laughs> oh, you don't have to enlighten us. Oh, God. <laughs> what is it? Get it over with. Well, it is a news article with the title, Man Has Legs and Fingers Amputated After Eating Leftover Noodles and Suffering Organ Failure. Okay, oh. I saw this. I saw this. And mm-hmm. yes, this was already added to my list. Mm-hmm. What? Mm-hmm. Just because they were left over? We'll get to it. A young man in New England underwent multiple amputations after eating a leftover low main noodle meal yeah. and suffering from multiple organ failure. What? The yeah. 19-year-old man's case was documented in the New England Journal of Medicine in March 2021. So this actually happened a year ago or over a year ago. And recently went viral after being illustrated in a fictional portrayal on YouTube. According to findings in this medical journal report, the man was fine until about 20 hours after eating a rice, chicken, and lo mein meal left over from a restaurant. First mm-hmm. of all, I eat leftovers constantly. I well, love how, leftovers. How old were the leftovers? Like he had, like, like from a the, day, like, like the next a day. day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What? That's After- totally fair game. What the fuck? Mm-hmm. It's not because it was old. Mm-hmm. Oh. After that period, he developed abdominal pain, nausea, and started vomiting. He mm-hmm. also experienced chest pain, shortness of breath, blurry vision, among other symptoms. Quote, multiple episodes of emesis occurred with vomitus that was either bilious or red-brown. So, okay, all right, journalism. (laughs) (laughs) We're fine. Uh, We don't need to know the color. We're not fine. There are a lot of things we are not fine. So weird barf is what they could have just said. Yeah, a lot of weird barf. (laughs) <laughs> the abdominal pain and vomiting were followed by the development of chills, generalized weakness, progressively worsening diffuse myalgias, 
chest pain, shortness of breath, headache, neck, stif- neck stiffness, and blurry vision read the findings of the report. So, like, really, really bad food poisoning mixed with, like, maybe an the, allergic like reaction? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, but it gets worse pretty quickly. Oh he also God. experienced purplish discoloration of the skin and was eventually taken to the pediatric intensive care unit at Massachusetts General Hospital. The man, Ugh. the man was treated for shock, organ failure, skin modeling, and a quote rapidly progressive reticular rash at Massachusetts General. What was in the low main? Was oh, he an enemy of Vladimir there. Putin? Like, yeah, seriously, I'm happened? gonna find out. Well, we'll get to it. From there, doctors amputated both of the man's legs below the knees and different parts of his fingers. Oof. According to the medical journal researchers, the man's friend who ate the same leftovers threw up once but did not get as sick. Can you imagine the survivor's guilt? Yeah. yeah. Uh, according to Newsweek, the hospitalized man had only received one of the three doses of me- meningococcal conjugate vaccine mm. without a booster. That's right. Okay. And had only had one dose of the Sarah Group B men- meningococcal vaccine out of two or three doses recommended by the CDC. So we got fucking like meningitis, vi- like bacterial or whatever. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. So WebMD states that food should be immediately refri- refrigerated to prevent the growth of bacteria that causes food poisoning and that f- the food does not need to be cooled before being refrigerated, which is a common misconception. So I think they just left it out too long. Mm-hmm. Also, it got some bacteria, and because he wasn't vaccinated, mm-hmm, he mm-hmm. this well, happened to him. Had multiple, yeah. yeah, amputations. Mm-hmm. I heard from somewhere that rice is actually a big, like, common culprit for spreading bacterial infections because there's a lot more surface area, mm-hmm. and because it doesn't like appear to go bad. Mm-hmm. as mm-hmm. fast but like it it has gone bad it does mold pretty rapidly too there's also w- different ways that they treat white rice mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. can be like poisonous if it's not done right yeah Yikes. so watch out for rice mm-hmm. uh, and, lo mein. Also, and lo mein. this terrifies me because i will eat leftovers the following day mm-hmm. but pretty much after that I'm squicky about it. Mm-hmm. And Zach will eat leftovers like a week later. It's, uh, Bill. it's I'll, like I'll eat them the for fuck? a while. It depends oh. on what it is. Oof. If it's meat, no. But if it's like vegetable something that's not yeah, soggy. I'm, Kenyon, I'm more with you on yeah, this one. I don't know. No, I don't know. Well, but I also eat so much in that first sitting that leftovers <laughs> are not like. <laughs> they're like kind of a non-issue. <laughs> That's how I enjoy um, not having meningitis from my low man. Oh my god, you guys! I just, <laughs> I just tried to Google this to figure out exactly what happened with the leftovers, and I accidentally yeah. typed into Google. <laughs> amputated <laughs> legs and giners. <laughs> Did you mean fingers? <laughs> what came up? Yeah. It's assumed Did I you? meant fingers and, and not g- giners. Giners. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! All yes. right, make sure to wash your giners. No, <laughs> my shiny vagina. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Okay, toxicologist says that this is a freak accident. It was a perfect storm of a sequence of events. I also need to make sure that all of my, like, random shots are up to date. Like, I'm COVID boosted, but I don't know the state of the rest of my shit. Uh Uh-huh. You know? I figure figure my doctor will just tell me, but that's also, like, well, do they? They're supposed to. Yeah, mine did. Yeah, but I've I've bounced around so much, yeah, that I I don't know what's up. Yeah, I don't know. I guess, like, there's so much that's digital in your chart. There's, like, stuff in my chart from years ago, like, pediatrics, that I can't believe is still in my fucking chart. Yeah, Mm. I don't know. And I have definitely changed doctors and locations. Okay, let me read this to you. This might be a little, uh, explain it a little better. 
A host of treatments were administered in an attempt to revive his failing organs and treat the infection. The diagnosis was men- meningococcal pur- purpura fulminans, which is Popery. a yeah, yes, which is a rare condition that has nothing to do with eating leftovers. Mm. Quote, perhaps the patient's doctors were worried at the beginning about a foodborne illness, but this actually turned out to be unrelated to the food. The way oh, oh. Well, this is fucking. You scared it, us for no reason. Well, we yeah, on a you rant t- about I've rice. Been targeted. Listen, the way the illness appeared <sighs> is quite typical for a case of this disease a fever and not feeling well, sometimes associated with gastrointestinal symptoms, sometimes cough, chest pain, severe headache, blah, blah, blah. The development of the rash uh, they describe in the setting of fever should prompt seeking immediate medical attention without timely antibiotic administration. This can progress. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. But what, but is what this? about the friend who also got sick? Just not as sick. Yeah, I don't know. Well, one time, Zach and I, as before, I knew that I was allergic to whitefish. And I had had, like, one bad reaction in the past when eating sushi. But I thought it was just, mm-hmm. like, food poisoning or whatever. And so then Zach and I had a gift card to a sushi restaurant. And we went and whatever and had a lovely meal. And... Then I got really, really fucking ill and Mm -hmm. was, you know, it was like an insane case of food poisoning, but like to the max. Mm -hmm. And I had to like miss a flight the next day because I like couldn't stand up and it was really bad. And we had two roommates. So there are four of us sharing one bathroom and just like seeing me that sick made Zach sick. Oh no. So then we were like fighting over the toilet, basically. <sighs> and so oh then God. we kind of thought, like, oh, we both got food poisoning from this Japanese restaurant. Mm-hmm. And we called them when we were feeling better and we were like, hey, we both got food poisoning. Like, did other people get sick? Like, this is really bad, whatever. And they were like, literally, no one else has called. Like, we don't think, like, respectfully, we don't think mm-hmm. it was us. Mm-hmm. And I thought and it wasn't. And I thought they were just assholes. And then, like, years later I figured out that Mm. I had this food allergy and Zach was just like so grossed out (laughs) he was like oh shit I ate the same shit as her I'm sick too (laughs) yeah I mean yeah maybe it was like almost like a psychosomatic reaction right (laughs) so fuck uh, my friend Iran he gags so fucking easily (laughs) He also rolls his ankle really easily. He rolled his ankle in a swimming pool one time. He's such like a oh tough How do you looking roll guy. Your ankle in a swimming pool. I don't know, but one time he had to use the bathroom at like a Walmart, <laughs> and <laughs> there was like someone had like shit on the floor or something like that. Ish. And he came out and see, and he was like sweating. And CG was like, "Are you okay?" And he just goes, "I can't. Uh, I can't. I can't. Uh, I can't uh, uh, I'll meet you. In the, uh, I'll be in the car." Uh. <laughs> <laughs> my aunt my aunt julie is like that she she gags at like anything and she <laughs> cannot stop once she starts <laughs> oh my god um okay it's really hard to stop gagging once it has begun that's mm-hmm. true okay so i've kind of br- breezed through this other article and i think that the left o- the food the leftovers were left out and so that's what triggered the vomiting. But this bacteria already, apparently, it like can live in your nose and your throat. Oh, great! So the fact that he that the food made him and his roommate vomit, like oh, triggered the bacteria. Yeah, and that's what got him sick. Okay, oh, wow. so another fear. So it if was you're, if you're and vomiting wasn't the from leftovers. food poisoning, it could always get worse, and it could trigger <sighs> your meningitis. Thank yes. you. Mm-hmm. Cool. Mm-hmm. cool. Cool, 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 <laughs> Okay. So this next little bit, this was a little newspaper blurb that I that was sent in by somebody. I think their name is Anita. And this was printed in the Oregonian from Portland, Oregon on September 25th, 1938. Ooh. The headline says, nope. He says, body isn't his. <laughs> <laughs> So this is from Galilee, Rhode Island, September 24th. Charles Kevill walked into a temporary morgue and looked at a body which had been identified as his. Nope. Nope, Nope. he said, that ain't me, and walked out again. (laughs) I'm glad he made the, (laughs) took the time. Yeah. (laughs) Nope. 
Just to be sure. <laughs> nope, not me. <laughs> Never be too careful. Oh my god! So that's the whole article. <laughs> no way. <Yeah. laughs> nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. Have a good one. <laughs> oh my god! All right, moving on. Coven member <laughs> Megan G sent in this email. Megan says, my great aunt Maxine was a goof her entire life up to and including her funeral in which a sign was placed in her casket that said, I win. Oh. <laughs> There's a picture of Aunt Maxine on the drive if you want to look at it. Oh oh. So this was an ongoing joke with her deceased siblings. They all, quote unquote, argued all their lives over who was the prettiest it, it was finally decided that whoever died last was the prettiest, and alas, oh. she won. Oh, <laughs> my God. Okay, so she has this obituary, and she, well, I'll just read the, ver the very beginning of the obituary. Maxine wanted her obituary to simply read, she was here, circled the drain for a bit, now she's gone. <laughs> <laughs> but her kids Love decided that. to elaborate a little bit more and then megan says anyway what the kids had to say was boring but her requested last words are fantastic r.i.p aunt max <laughs> max maxine and then the nickname max for a girl mm -hmm. is so cute so cute it's so cute my grandma has a sister named maxine yeah that's cute i love that she has 8,000 siblings. So. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, pick a name. Hard to keep track. <laughs> Cir circle the drain and you'll land she on one. She was here. <laughs> Circled the drain for a bit. Now she's gone. Oh That's it. God. So good. Okay. So I will end with an obituary. This was sent in by Sarah K. And this is from 2013, but it's really good. It made me laugh. Princess K of the Milky Way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This obit made me laugh out loud a couple of times. Okay. Waffle House lost a loyal customer on April 30th, 2013. Oh. Antonia W. Tony LaRue died after a battle with multiple illnesses. Lupus, rickets, scurvy, <gasps> kidney disease, <gasps> and feline leukemia. <laughs> what? Wait. Wait. Now I'm. What? This is sus all of a sudden. <laughs> also, not a good advertisement for Waffle House if your loyal customer died of died of scurvy, feline AIDS, scurvy, <laughs> rickets, kidney disease. Like no, not one feline AIDS. Feline leukemia. Sip of orange juice a month. <laughs> would, they would have been fine. <laughs> oh my god. I fucking love Waffle House. They do not need any more marketing, good or bad, in my opinion. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, Waffle House can do no wrong. What happened to this bitch? This sick All right, bitch. Back to Tony. How did she get feline leukemia? <laughs> she had previously conquered polio as a child, contributing to her unusually petite ankles and the nickname Polio Legs given to her by her ex-husband, Jean LaRue Jr. No. Ah, not a nickname. <laughs> polio no. Legs. Not a nickname. Just, no. just an insult. <laughs> the oh next sentence, God. it should not be difficult to imagine the multiple reasons for their divorce 35 <laughs> plus years ago. Oh, polio legs here. The old ball and chain. <laughs> polio <Holy> legs. <laughs> shit. I love that part. Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> yeah, that's why she loved it. Oh, my God. <laughs> What the, the other fuck? The other oh day, my God. the other day, Corey called. He said, "Hi, Bean Sprout," and I thought he say, "I thought he called me Penis Throat." Jesus Christ! <laughs> and I was like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> Holy, Holy shit! Hi, Penis Throat. <laughs> <laughs> Oh okay. my god, my heart. I think I'm having a fucking heart attack. <laughs> two, okay, two children resulted from that marriage, Hayden Hoffman and Jean F. LaRue the third. Due to multiple anonymous Mother's Day cards which arrived each May, the children suspect there were other siblings, but that has never been verified. <laughs> <laughs> anonymous Mother's Day cards. Oh <laughs> Who are those from? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. She is survived by the two confirmed <laughs> aforementioned children. 
<laughs> her favorite child, Jean the Third, eloped in college <laughs> and married. Who obviously wrote this? <laughs> and married Kim Fulford, who dearly loved Tony. They gave Tony three grandchildren: Jean the Fourth, Anne Elizabeth, and Hannah Grace. Tony often remarked that her son, Jean the Third, was quote just like his father, her ex husband, Jean <laughs> Junior. A statement that haunts her son to this day. Uh, yeah, <laughs> maybe you weren't her favorite, Jean the Third. <laughs> Hayden Hoffman married Stephen Hoffman of Charleston, West Virginia. They reside in Bay, St. Louis, and carry the LaRue family torch forward through each and every happy hour, Mardi Gras, and cocktail party. Steve's quiet demeanor has provided a ballast to an otherwise unstable family. <laughs> oh, my, oh my God. God. <laughs> they have two children, Charlie and, <laughs> Charlie and Helen, the well-behaved child Tony's daughter deserved to raise. <laughs> Sounds like Helen and Steve are the only two normal ones here. Aww. Or it's or it's sarcastic and Helen is a hellraiser. True, yeah. true, true. Tony had four sisters, Patty the elder, Kitty the cook, Lisa the lawyer, and PG the PG. <laughs> there's what? a there's ellipses too. PG the uh-huh. PG. These sisters dearly loved Tony, spoke often, and as one family photo proved, all preferred Clairol blonde in a box number 47. Oh, my God. <laughs> they inherited their unique sense of humor from their father, Paul P. Marvelous White. <laughs> oh. He sounds like... He sounds like a snake oil salesman. P. Or Marvelous. Like a, or like a circus... Like a goat balls yep. peddler. <laughs> yep. P. Marvelous Hat at your service. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and here are all my girls. Tony, Patty, P- Kitty, Lisa, and PG. Well, P. Marvelous Hat. <laughs> at your service. <laughs> well, P. Marvelous does sound really fun because my next sentence is, he gave nicknames to all the girls such as... T- <laughs> Polio legs. Polio Jesus. legs. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Okay. He gave nicknames to all the girls such as Tittle Mouse, no. Kitty Cat, Booter Bounce, <laughs> Spooker McDougal, and what? Poodle Pump. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, <laughs> your nicknames. P. Marvelous, your nicknames. <laughs> I am writing, I'm stealing this, I'm sorry. I'm absolutely writing a story about P. Marvelous Platt at your service. <laughs> Spooker <Spooker> McDougal. <laughs> Will you please say, <laughs> Will you please say names again? <laughs> <laughs> Tittle Mouse. Kitty Cat. Booter Bounce. <laughs> Spooker McDougal. And Poodle Pump. <laughs> oh, and polio legs. <laughs> polio legs. <laughs> hey, oh you can't call me polio legs. I'm Spooker <laughs> McDougal. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay. Okay. Tony oh previously goodness. served on the board of the Hancock County Library Foundation. Ironically, the only correspondence she's received from the library since her resignation has been overdue notices for several overdue books. <laughs> A true statement. Between the ICU, dialysis, and physical therapy, she selfishly refused to make the time to return them. You worked for if you were the on the board of the foundation and then you mm. had all of these comorbidities. You're good. Her last words were, tell them the checks in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, queen. Tony retired from GE Plastics after Hurricane Katrina in 2007. She would undoubtedly cherish the thought of having the former smoking room named in her honor. Oh, my God. Wow. There's a smoking room at GE Plastics? <laughs> the South I guess. is really a different era. I it's know. The lounge. <laughs> like... Wow. (laughs) Any send off for Tony would not be complete without mentioning her lifelong buddy, Myrtle Jane Wingo Haas. What are these names? I don't know. (laughs) These are not real. P. Marvelous White. P. Marvelous White. (laughs) And Myrtle Jane Wingo Haas. (laughs) Myrtle Jane Wingo Haas. 
<laughs> this is my best friend, Myrtle Jane Wingo Halls. <laughs> I fucking can't. You know, this. like some people are two namers, you know, <laughs> like yeah. Lyle Bleen. Yeah, this <laughs> is a four namer. Myrtle Jane. Myrtle Jane. Myrtle Jane, Myrtle Jane Myrtle? Wingo Halls. Myrtle Jane Wingo Halls. <laughs> <laughs> Myrtle, Myrtle, Bo Myrtle. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, oh my, my God. God. And also her adopted daughters, Liz and Laura. She considered oh. Aaron Burrell to be a distant grandson, not distant enough. I don't know who that is. No <laughs> idea. And had the ability with family pets to usher them toward heaven at an unrivaled pace. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's us. <laughs> Hence the feline leukemia. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, is this finally the answer? <laughs> I don't know to her, that question. Her favorite activity was sipping hot tea on her back porch with friends seated around her porch ensemble from jo- Dollar General. Again, not kidding. The woman oh. liked big yellow signs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> she sure did. <laughs> This will be sold to the highest bidder at her garage estate sale. <laughs> Any gifts in her honor should be made to the Hancock County Library Foundation to the overdue book fund. <laughs> wow. Oh, my God. Oh, visitation will be led by Reverend Kurt Moore of Orlando, Florida. A questionable choice for any spiritual event, but one the family felt would be appropriate due to the fact that that every time Tony heard Kurt preach, she prayed for Jesus to return at that very moment. So that he would <laughs> stop? Yes. Come back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just let this be the end of day. <laughs> just take me now. Holy shit. Uh, on a last but serious note, the woman who loved life and taught her children to, quote, laugh at the days to come is now safely in the arms of Jesus and dancing at the wedding feast of the Lamb. Is that she will a be. Thing? She will That's be so creepy. She will be missed as a mother, friend, and grandmother. Anyone wearing black will not be admitted to the memorial. She is not dead. She is alive. Well, Old polio legs still got it. Yeah. Old polio still legs. Still dancing. <laughs> wow. Oh, good old poodle pump. Oh, I do pump. not want the size of my ankles mentioned in <laughs> my own. <laughs> Putting putting that out there right now. (laughs) (laughs) I loved polio legs. Oh my god! Wow. (laughs) (laughs) I I think that's like one of the best (laughs) opens I've ever heard. (laughs) So cute. I just want to be. P. Mysterio, or whatever the fuck. P. Marvelous. Why? Mysterio. <laughs> I'm sorry, of, was I that far New off? Orleans Parish. <laughs> I Check like Myrtle Jane Wingo Halls. Myrtle Jane Wingo Halls. Hall. 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 <laughs> and P. Marvelous. <laughs> Myrtle Our SEO Jane. is going to really go up when we Seriously. play these hashtags. Myrtle Jane Wingo Halls. Oh my god. <laughs> Yes. Anyway, I will, now I think I need to have a kid because that is a good name. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you could have two, Myrtle and Max. Myrtle and Max. Oh, Wiggle that's Halls. really cute. <laughs> I know. I'll just get more pets. Yeah, there uh, you go. That's a lot cheaper. Yeah. Uh, maybe, hopefully, you don't send them to heaven at an unrivaled pace. <laughs> Listen, if we get another cat. After the dog and at least one of the rabbits dies, it's, it's going to be Myrtle Jane. There you go, Myrtle Jane. And, if it's and a then boy, the other one, Wingo Hoff. Yeah, Wingo <laughs> Hoff. If it's a boy, it'll be P. P. Marvelous. Marvelous. <laughs> that would be a great name for your next white rabbit. Yeah, P. Marvelous. White. Like a Axis. lion head. Lion Blanche head rabbit. Is a lion head. Oh, okay. Well, maybe you Should could we change. change Blanche's name. No. Blanche P. Marvelous White. Blanche P. Marvelous White. Blanche White is the, it's the name. <laughs> <laughs> Two on the nose. <laughs> it's a little redundant. Just save it for the next one. We all know you're going to get another pet way too soon. Yeah, you're all <laughs> oh animal hoarder. I just had a fit. You know I get attacked. <laughs> <laughs> my god well thanks okay. thanks for that and thanks oh for god. listening yeah we'll, so see, amazing. we'll see you next month <laughs> Bye. 
Thanks for listening to Wine and Crime. Our cover art is by Kala Yip. Music by Phil Young and Corey Wendell. Editing by Jonathan Camp. Check out our website and blog at wineandcrimepodcast.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at wineandcrimepod. If you have questions, answers, or recommendations to share, email us at wineandcrimepodcast at gmail.com. Episodes are available on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, basically wherever you get your favorite podcasts. And if you like the show, please rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts. It is the best way to spread the word. If you'd like to show your support, visit our Patreon page to keep this podcast and the wine flowing. Cheers!